In this video, we're going to discuss the difference between hackers, crackers, and attackers. Now, if you just want to learn how to do ethical hacking, this probably is not very important, but if you want to actually go and take the ethical hacking exam, this video is really important because they're going to ask you the difference of these guys. What are each of them? Uh, and much more in depth than just those three terms, and we're going to cover that in this video. So hackers and crackers, also known as the bad guys. Uh, hackers were originally not bad guys. They were just computer enthusiasts. It was people who didn't really necessarily uh, have malicious intent, um, but our popular media and outlets have changed that. So hackers were guys who were just interested in computers. Uh, they started probing systems, kind of figure out how they work. Um, if they did that against people's will, that would be bad and malicious intent, but not all of them had that. And hackers was actually just a term of endearment for other computer enthusiasts. Crackers came about because it was short for criminal hackers. It was basically people who were doing the bad stuff. Um, over time, that term just became known as the guys who were trying to hack into computer software without permission. Uh, crackers, one of the big things with crackers you'll see is guys who actually go and try to break the copy protection codes. So, for instance, if you have a Windows uh, CD and you want to get a, you don't want to pay Microsoft their licensing fee, you could crack it uh, using a, a cracker would go ahead and crack that software and bypass the um, the, the registration code, for instance. Um, and that obviously goes against the end user license agreements, obviously without permission of Microsoft, and it is therefore illegal. Um, due to the confusion, though, between good guys and bad guys, we had this new term called the ethical hacker, which was born. And that's why they have the certified ethical hacker certification, um, because it, it's that good guy, right? It gives you that nomicker, that white hat. And we'll talk about that a little bit as well. Ethical hackers, these are the good guys. These are what you're trying to be, right? You want to be good. You want to help people. This is the individual who's hired by an organization to perform those security tests and penetration tests and vulnerability assessments. They test those systems, they identify the weaknesses, and the key here is they help the security organization to patch those weaknesses. So I go in, I test your systems, I found a way in that the bad guys might have found, I then help you patch that hole so that the bad guys can't come in after me. Uh, this performs the same activities that the hackers might, but we do it without the bad intent. So we use that bad guy mindset to help create good effects. So what hats do our hackers wear? Well, as a hacker, you can be a white hat, a black hat, or a gray hat. White hat's pretty easy. It's your ethical hackers, right? These are your, they help you secure the organizational systems. So if you believe in the whole moniker that they have from CEH, which is think like an attacker to beat an attacker, um, and they understand the vulnerabilities, that's your white hat. That's the hat I tend to wear. Right? I, I'm a good guy. I try to help organizations fix their problems. Black Hat. This is the guys who are doing illegal activities. They're solely in the bad realm. They hack into networks without permission. They are breaking rules, breaking laws, and they are the ones that are trying that people are trying to put in jail because they're the bad guys. Okay. Um, then you have the one that's the gray hat, and they kind of work sometimes on both sides. Um, they may be white hats by day and black hats by night. Right. Um, let me give you a great example of this: a bug finder. Right. Bug finders, if they say I go on the internet and I'm probing Facebook's website because they have an open bug bounty contest and I find a vulnerability and I take that vulnerability and I call Facebook and say, hey, I found a way into your website. You need a patch right here. This is a problem. That would be a white hat move. Okay. Um, what if I took that same thing, I found the vulnerability and then I exploited it and stole everybody's data? That would be a black hat move. What if I took that vulnerability, posted it out on, on uh, Reddit, and said, hey, everybody, Facebook has a vulnerability, and it's a zero day, and it's available right now. Here you go. Well, I didn't do anything bad with it, but I didn't do anything good with it either, right? I put it out in open press before I told Facebook about it. So guess what? Now the bad guys can take that and use it against Facebook. That puts me clearly in the gray category, right? Not good, not bad, but I'm definitely leaning towards bad at that point, uh, especially as a cybersecurity guy. That kind of irks me. Um, if instead... Let's say I found a vulnerability in Facebook's site. I call Facebook and say, hey, I found a vulnerability. Here it is. You have three months to fix it, then I'm going to post it on my website. If Facebook didn't fix it in the next three months, that's their problem. right? I gave them fair warning. That's white. If I just posted it today and I told them about it today, that's definitely gray. Okay. So there's, there's that grayness there. Again, white's good, black's bad, gray, eh, somewhere in the middle. Depends on your viewpoint. So let's talk about the categories of attackers. There's lots of them out there, right? Freakers. Uh, freakers is a term for people who like to focus on telephone and PBX systems. If you're going after telephones, voice, uh, any kind of voice system like that, uh, whether it's fax machines, voice, or anything else, that's freakers. Great example of this is in the old days we had a guy uh, named Captain Crunch. And Captain Crunch was actually John Draper. And he actually figured out in the 70s 
that Captain Crunch had these whistles in the Captain Crunch cereal that if you bought enough boxes, you got a whistle. Well, the whistle happened to actually be at 2600 hertz. That 2600 hertz was the frequency that if you blew it into a payphone, it would give you free long distance. It was the same frequency that tripped it to thinking that you had put in the right amount of money and authorized the long distance calls for free. So this was a freaker, right? He focused on phone systems. He figured out a vulnerability. He then realized it by using that particular whistle. Um, that was the Captain Crunch thing. That's a freaker. So if you hear phones in the, in the problems, they're talking about different types of phone hacks, that's a freaking thing. Uh, next one we have is software crackers and hackers. We talked about this a little bit earlier, right? Let's say I have Microsoft. I want to break the licensing and registration keys. That would be an expert in reverse engineering. That's my crackers. Okay, system crackers or hackers. Uh, so system hackers are the ones who go after operating systems or network systems. They are the ones who actually will create malware and viruses, trojans, and botnets. These are pretty sophisticated guys that can actually reverse engineer code. Uh, they can look for these weaknesses, find them, and exploit them. These are these are great guys to have in your security force. If they're white hat, uh, if they're not, mm, it's a bad thing to have in the outside world, right? Suicide hackers. These are hackers who carry out attacks even though they know they might get caught or arrested. Okay. Why would they do this? Because they really believe in their cause, their issue, or really hate you, one or the other, right? They don't care that they're gonna get that they're gonna be seen, they don't care that you're gonna be able to trace it back to them, they're gonna do it anyway. These guys are kind of scary. I like to think about them just like I, I do, you know, um, the, the 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 terrorists, right? They 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 don't care if they hurt themselves in the process as long as they hurt you, right? These these are bad guys to have up against you. If you piss one of these groups off, ooh, be warned. Uh, another one, script kitties. So script kitties are lovingly called that because they're low-skilled attackers, kind of like little children, right? They like to use everybody else's tools. They don't know how to program anything on their own. They just download free, uh, free tools that are out there, whether they're vulnerability assessment tools or hacking tools, and they conduct attacks using them. A lot of times they don't even understand what they're doing. A great example of this is a, a few years ago, Anonymous had put out a petition, hey everyone, join us and, 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 and help us take down the big evil blank, fill in the blank, whoever they were going after, they put up tools on their website that you could download, like the Ion Cannon. You downloaded this tool, you opened it up on Windows, you typed in the website you wanted to go to, and you hit start, and it would start doing a denial of service against that website by overloading it with traffic. And if they had a million people doing this at once, all from their personal computers, it could overload web servers like Microsoft or Yahoo or Amazon, these huge companies, because of that. Um, these guys, a lot of people didn't even know what they were doing or why they were doing it. They were just trying to be part of a cause, right? They didn't, they knew nothing about computers, but they could open a program and type in an address and hit go. And now they're a script kitty and they're attacking somebody and doing so illegally. The next one we're going to talk about is insider threats or disgruntled employees. So we already have authorized users that have access to our networks, right? So like in the last lesson, I think I talked about, you know, I have an administrative assistant and maybe she's upset and she heard that she's gonna get fired in three weeks. So she already has access, she already has a user account. She can do stuff against our corporation, right? Uh, it may be a skilled or unskilled attacker, right? So it could be the guy in the mailroom, or it could be your system administrator, you never know. Um, if you look in, in the recent years in, in the government, uh, Edward Snowden movie just came out. Uh, the Snowden movie just came out, Edward Snowden has been classified as a disgruntled employee of the NSA. Uh, he was an insider threat to the NSA, whether you agree with him or not. Um, he had access, he used that access to get the information that he took out, right? Uh, and, and, and that's you know what we see out there. Um, and there's a lot of insider threats out there. It is probably one of the biggest security threats to your organization. How do you stop the inside guy? He already has access. So you gotta be careful about that. There's lots of ways to do it. We'll talk about some of those in the future. Cyber terrorists, cyber criminals, and hacktivists. Um, I kind of lumped all three of these together. Um, some people probably disagree with me on that, especially with the hacktivist part, but I'll put them all together. Um, just like cyber terrorists are just like regular terrorists, except they're using uh, computers to do it. Cyber criminals are just like criminals, but they're using cyber to do it, right? They conduct activities against governments, corporations, or individuals. So if you have a, I don't know, Russian mob that is stealing credit card data so they can make purchases, and steal the money, that's a cyber criminal, right? Uh, similarly, if you have a cyber terrorist who wants to take down, I don't know, Coca-Cola because they think Pepsi is better, and they start doing uh, hacking into Coca-Cola and stealing all their data, um, that would be a cyber terrorist, right? And then they put that information out there to, to make them look bad. It can be an individual or member of a group. Uh, hacktivists, um, Anonymous is a great example of a hacktivist group, right? 
Um, whether one person in anonymous is doing it or all of the people in anonymous are doing it, they are doing what they believe for a cause. Um, by the law, they would be a cyber criminal because they are breaking the law using computers in an unauthorized method. Um, but people think of them as hacktivists because they're doing it based on beliefs. Cyber criminals tend to do it for money. Cyber terrorists tend to do it for uh, religious or ideological reasons. Hacktivists might be, hey, I don't like the fact that PETA is trying to save the animals. I'm going to go after PETA. Or I don't like the fact that Exxon uh, Oil is drilling in the Atlantic. Therefore, I'm going to go after Exxon Mobil, right? They may have different viewpoints of why you're going after what company, but that would be hacktivism. It's a form of activism. But again, it is illegal, so be careful when you do that, right? You don't want to be doing that. So that's just a brief overview of the attackers, crackers, and the, and, the, and the hackers and the different types that we have. Again, to perform an ethical hacking test, you really don't need to know that. But to be able to pass the CEH exam, you do need to know that information. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them in below in the comment field. We'll get back to you. Thank you.